Hello, it's Scott Manley here with episode 3 of Take On Mars Career Mode. We have uh, crossed almost a kilometre worth of distance from the previous sand crater in our small but slow probe uh, rover. Uh, its batteries have been drained and recharged multiple times, but now we are here. After almost an hour worth of driving and recharging, we're ready to take on the challenges that this new site presents us. This is two impact craters. This mission consists of examining one bigger and one smaller crater, situated nearby each other. Use your vehicle to photograph the inside of both craters, scan selected rocks in their sensors with APXS, and then gauge the radiation levels in both the areas. And so we're going to start doing that. First, take this picture. Ha! Huh, that's an easy one. Huh. Come on, give me some real challenge here. Now, recognize, analyze rock scan 01. So there's a rock in that crater which we got to get up close to. The, and then analyze it. Of course, we're going to analyze it with the APXS, which I did look up this time. <laughs> Alpha Particle X-ray Spectrometer, and that what that means is it analyzes the radiation that comes off when you emit alpha particles at the rock, and this can tell us all sorts of fascinating stuff about it. You see, um, it's a very common thing to do in labs is that you fire, you analyze materials by firing radiation at them, and then seeing how that radiation is changed by the material. Uh, in the case of this, uh, it's using alpha particles coming off a source of radioactive material and you, you let that irradiate the target and then all sorts of radiation comes back and you figure out what how that has been changed. Now it's on the, the back of this, which is actually the front of this, but as far as I'm concerned it's on the back even though I'm having to drive forwards. It's all very complicated. It's like God was having a joke and decided to put my camera in my butt and make my face my nose but then again actually the APXS is kind of like a nose since it's sensing things so maybe it's just that I've got the camera in my butt or something. This is all very complicated I'm just gonna sit here and think about it while I analyze it kind of rubbing my instruments up against this rock. Ooh, yes uh, I'm a clearly a capable space probe with superpowers including being able to analyze rocks with my butt. Okay Enough of that. Yeah, the, the Alpha Particle X-ray Spectrometer, APXS, is a pretty common gizmo on a lot of space hardware. It's used at close range, and yeah, what you do is you have a radioactive material in some sort of sealed box, and then when you drive up to the target, put this against it, and uh, start to let you open it up and let the radiation fall on the target and then you watch to see what comes back. And we're just going to go over towards this and try to take some pictures here. So we're, we've already analyzed that. It's excellent. It has accepted the mission as being complete. Now we're going to get some photos from the other crater. Which I guess we got to actually get onto the lip of this crater this time. We can't just snap a photo from miles away and call this mission complete. No, this one we actually have to get close to. I guess, oh yeah, big crater. So no, much more impressive. Anyway, um, the alpha particles that come off, alpha particles, I'm sure you know they are made of two protons and two neutrons together. They're essentially helium nuclei, and they come off at about one, about 5% of the speed of light, I believe, for your typical radiation source, uh, through radioactive decay. Now these fly into the sample, and, well, the sample's made up of atoms. Now, if you think about atoms, the, what they are is mostly electron clouds with a very, very, very tiny nucleus in the middle. People don't really realize how tiny the nucleus is. If you have like uh, an atom which is the size of a house, then the nucleus is probably going to be smaller than a grain of sand. So if you throw, you know, if you throw grains, little stones at a house, <laughs> it's like the odds of hitting one particular grain of sand is the odds of a an alpha particle actually hitting the nucleus. So I'm just trying to reverse into this thing very carefully and start analyzing. And again, we have to wait, stay still while the radiation goes into this. Um, so yeah, they let the alpha particles fly through and what they tend to do is knock off electrons. And as the electrons get knocked off, um, the atom says like, hey, I'm missing an electron, help. Are you sure? Yes, I'm positive, haha. <laughs> um, 
So when spare electrons do come back to the atom, they fall into the, the missing location, and in doing so, they release energy. And that energy comes off in the form of x-rays, which can be analysed. And, well, okay, apparently I didn't complete this mission. Hold on. I think I'm going to have to reposition the sensor and get it closer to the rock in question. Let's, um... Hmm. Let's try again. Yeah, and it's like... That may be a little better. Maybe I need to turn it a little more onto the target. Ah, dear, these instruments are so fickle sometimes. Don't know who designed these, but they're very annoying. So yeah, that's uh, that's where the X-ray part comes from. But the alpha particles flying through, it is possible that they hit the nuclei, right? And when they do so, they get scattered off at, uh, you know... They put, impart some energy into the nucleus. Nope, that didn't work. Let's. We've turned it a little and we've tried to move it even closer to the rock, deeper inside that cylindrical halo of light. Mm, that might work for us. So, the few ones that do hit the nucleus, some of them will come straight back at the sensor, right? And because they've basically bounced off and come straight back, that's like an almost perfect collision. And they lose a little bit of energy. They lose a little bit of energy to the nucleus of the atom. And the lighter the atom, the lighter the atomic mass of the nucleus, the more energy the alpha particles will lose. So you can actually figure out the atomic masses of what's in there. Yes, I got my, I got it. Excellent. Aha, detailed analysis of both craters shows the possibility that they were formed by the same celestial body, which split during its fall into two separate parts. No doubt because Bruce Willis and friends drilled a hole into the middle of it and planted a nuclear bomb. Seriously, that would totally work. I mean, Armageddon, I enjoy that movie, but that is just so much insanely broken stuff. Yay, new tech level as well. Tech level four, high-powered illumination system. Lights, terrain imager, terrain imager, thermal generator. Excellent. I have telefocus and wide angle now, so I have more lenses in my camera collection. Excellent stuff. Now, let's go and find some more missions to do. Navigation HUD, bring me to my new target. Inspect the designated area, region of interest. Where is it? It's over... Ah, okay, we've got to come out of this crater and do a little circle. Well, no rest for the wicked. Uh, okay, so what we were saying, yes. So you can tell basically how light how, or how heavy the nuclei by the energy of the alpha particles coming back off. The problem is, because as I said, the nucleus is so ridiculously tiny, very few alpha particles actually hit the nuclei. So you need to kind of sit there bombarding this with radiation for a really, really long time. And by long time, I mean like the Pathfinder rover, the Sojourner, it would drive up to a rock, they would put the thing, you know, the APXS on the rock, and then essentially leave it there collecting data for 10 hours. Like, essentially while there was sun, they would collect data, and before the sun got down, went down, they would upload the you know, collected data to the the main Pathfinder probe and then it would ultimately relay that back to Earth. Um, so yeah, you'd have to wait. The longer you wait, the more data you get, the better you can, dis you know, the better results you have ultimately. It's all about uh, getting as many events as possible. There's also another, there's also other things that can come back instantly. It's possible that the alpha particles hit the nuclei and get absorbed and that will make the root nuclei frequently it'll change them into a complete it'll change them into a completely different nuclei but frequently these will then be radioactive ones so those will then subsequently emit you know either sometimes just alpha particles other times they might emit protons or neutrons or beta particles there's a whole lot of things that can happen and you know these little instruments are collecting all that now as i said in a lab normally you would use you, you wouldn't use a radiation source, like a chunk of radioactive material in a lab. If you had a lab, you would use a dedicated machine that would generate a radiation beam, which would be much more tightly controllable. You would be able to exactly select the energy of the particle that you were using, and then you would be able to change the energy to get better readings and explore how the material changes under exposure to different kinds of radiation and different energies of radiation. 
But these machines that do that, they take a you know they take a lot of power. They're big, they're bulky, and they're not great for sending on a space probe. So it's much easier just to have a, a little chunk of radioactive material in a kind of you know radio radiation proof box that you can open up, irradiate the target, and then close that back down. So that's why uh, you'll put these kind of instruments on space probes. They're not you know designing instruments for spacecraft is not the same as designing instruments for things in the lab okay explore complete let's find some stuff to do analyze the selected analyze where is it um no no analyze there camera uh, yes atmosphere radiation so we're going to check the radiation in the atmosphere which is highly interesting because very rare the atmosphere on Mars would have radiation in it. Well, I guess it does have carbon dioxide, although, hmm, one wonders what kind of carbon dating you would have on Mars. Probably none at all. Yeah, uh, so you see on top of this we have the, I think the way this is set up is there's an instrument at the back, which is the radiation sensor, and there's another thing on top, which is the, um, environmental monitoring station. I think they're separate, but I'm not 100% sure. Regardless, let's just drive through this big, you know, cylindrical body of light that represents the area we're supposed to analyze. Come on. Yeah, there we go. Okay, wasn't sure how long that was going to take. And aim for this one. EMS, Environmental Monitoring System, which means we have to drive a few feet away and take some temperature readings and pressure readings. I can see it here. It says 16.8 degrees centigrade, which is quite balmy, actually. With all tasks of major scientific value complete, the mission can be considered accomplished. Well done. Okay. So we're now on this grand quest to analyze these twin craters. Examine the specified area of interest. Where is it? 72 meters away. Uh, this will take another couple of minutes to get over this way. Yeah, temperature 16.8. It must be about midday by now. Um, actually, it'd be interesting to know what time that is, how they're measuring time relative to Mars. It says 11.07. Um, I'm guessing that they're maybe just doing like you know, 25 or whatever hours in the day. I don't really know. I'm curious about that. Also, you see that I'm still on August 4th, despite this now being August 9th. That's because time isn't running for me when I'm not playing this game. Ah. So anyway, um, these alpha particle, you know, X-ray spectrometer things, they've, they've turned up on a whole bunch of different space probes now. Um... Yeah, pretty much any lander, they've been really convenient things to do, to include. There, there, there's one on uh, Curiosity, there were on, you know, the other two, whatever. <laughs> I forget, the Spirit and Opportunity, that's right, they both had the same thing. So it's a pretty common thing to bring down with you, and therefore unsurprising that they would be on these missions. Um, Curiosity, or not Curiosity, Pathfinder, it analysed a couple of different rocks and it, it was quite interesting that the rocks were so incredibly different. One of them was found to be essentially basalt and the other was found to be like some sort of sedimentary rock. And they were basically sitting next to each other, which, you know, it's like, wow, these things must have been carried here somehow and they're, they're big rocks. So it's pretty strong evidence that they might have got pushed around by, say, you know, water. Of course, uh, you know, there's more and more evidence for water having been on Mars in the past. The question is, how far in the past? And, um, yeah, how much was there originally? You know, was Mars like Earth at one point and then it died? Who knows? Uh, <laughs> you know, Earth hasn't been... Well, Earth has changed a lot in its time as well. You know, like... Um, 600 million years ago, Earth was like basically all color covered in ice. There was like a whole phase in Earth's development where it literally froze solid, except for a few, you know, small places. Oh, excellent! Got that photo, and we gotta go and analyze another rock. Yes, I will bring my butt to you and scratch my butt up against you so that I can analyze your atomic makeup and tell all my friends what my butt thinks about your rock. Yes, 
God has a terrible sense of humor. And by God, I mean the the people that designed this. <laughs> I'm terrible. No offense, I'm just kidding. I'm just, what, what do these rovers think about when they're not when they're on their own in the Martian night, unable to talk at home? curiosity out there like celebrating its first anniversary by you know sitting with a rock and you know saying drowning its sorrows <laughs> let's go right in close and then I'm gonna turn around and the trick here for getting nice and accurately in is to look for the tracks where are the tracks um, okay I guess I didn't see the tracks where that that those are tracks going off in that direction. I think they're like right about here. Let's try this. Reverse in. Reverse, reverse, reverse. Come on, give me that red box. And eat the red box. We all know that red box means pa oh crap, okay, no red box. Uh, just a little more. There, try to get that in. And uh, dun, dun. yes! We got the red box of power. And we just need to click on it and analyze this thing. As I said, rubbing my butt up against rocks for science. Ah. And it's, you know, this does seem to take a long time, but as I said, you did this with a Pathfinder, it spent 10 hours collecting data. So, not everything's, thankfully, not everything is real time. Have I analyzed it? No? What? Oh yeah, no, we're still waiting. Yes! Excellent! No mission assigned. That's a good sign. That means I've completed it. With all tasks assigned, the mission is complete and accomplished. Okay, so we've presumably unlocked the next area now. Let's bring up the standard HUD for navigation purposes and see where it is. Oh, there it is! 1.1, 1.2 kilometers. Oh, great. Uh, that's probably a really long way away. And in fact, it's a really long way away on the other side of the crater. Uh, standard photo, analyze, monetize, and all that, yes. Well, looks like I've got a really long drive ahead of me going around this crater. Um, so I guess I will do that offline. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any features on this new rover that I will need, but I'm gonna try taking the old rover over there for uh, you know cash flow reasons but that will be a really long drive and no doubt we'll need some more recharging and things like that until next time I'm Scott Manley fly safe